Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is William Yang. I'm a journalist uh, from Taiwan, and I work for Germany's Deutsche Welle. Um, today, I'm very honored uh, to have a virtual conversation with, uh, I think, in my opinion, one of the most talented artists and also activist who has been using his power of art to confront some of the most powerful countries and the leaders around the world. Uh, Ba Diu Cao is a Australian Chinese artist who uh, three years ago decided to remove his mask and uh, use his true identity to confront China, but also other authoritarian regimes around the world. Um, Ba Diu Cao, thank you so much for joining us. I think I wanted to start out by asking you, why do you choose art as a way for you to present your activism? Um, first of all, I want to say it's really a great pleasure and honor uh, to be here um, virtually in Taiwan again. This is a fabulous country, and it's definitely an honor to talk to you people now. Um, you think I never really see myself uh, as an activist or dissident in this first row? Um, for me, it's very natural that um, I just want to be an artist, and that's uh, the way that I can use to express myself, but also talking about the issues that I concern the most. And in this scenario, it will be the human rights abuse in China and in other countries as well. Um, I wouldn't say, you know, there's always a lot of different ways of confronting powers, but creativity and art is definitely one of the things that the Chinese government or other certain regimes fear the most, because they are fear of anything which is out of control, full of life and creativity. They want everything to be under control, but as an artist, our role is always to create something new, break the boundaries, testing the limitation, which is something a certain regime will not tolerate. And one of the central elements uh, of many of the artworks that has been featured in your, is the iconic tank men scene from the Tiananmen Square massacre. Uh, what does this thing uh, represent and mean to you? Um, I think when we talk about uh, China's defense or China's fight back from ordinary people, we all trace back to this very moment when an ordinary guy is brave enough to stand in, uh, in front of his tank, knowing that the power comparison is so unrealistic, but still collecting the courage do that. Um, what you see on the screen is actually a real tattoo that I'm among my arms that I put on on the 25th anniversary of Tiananmen Massacre. I always revisiting this image because this is not a, like a superhero or, or you know comic uh, people with magic. It's just ordinary people, and, and we don't even know whose real identity is. But it means that even for ordinary people, that we have this courage within us. And at that moment, given all the tragedy and fear and blood that we've seen on this square, the Tiananmen Square, still, at the bottom of the heart of the ordinary guy coming out to do these extraordinary things. Um, but I also want to say, you know, sometimes when a hero is faceless, um, it's easy to imagine. And it's easy to imagine you can be one of them. But sometimes when a hero has a face, uh, then inevitably it will decade, it will change. So that is why you know, Tank Man is always uh, meaning very strongly and special to me in person. And here are a few iconic artworks featuring the Tank Man scene that you have produced in recent years. Uh, one of the is uh, featuring a flag of Trump 2020 and then the tank man. What inspired you to apply the scene to the 2020 U.S. presidential election? Um, I have to say this is not easy work for me to do. And, and because of this work that I get into a lot of trouble for myself, uh, I've been criticized as propaganda from Beijing. I've been criticized as traitor of the pro-democracy movement of China because a lot of people are believing um, a strong man like Trump uh, would be the hope for China's change. Um, but for me, I always think human rights is something universal. 
which means it's not just something that the Chinese people are fighting for, it's also something that everyone around the world is fighting for. What I fear and, and sad and disappointing to see is uh, along the way of hardship of you know, expressing dissent, uh, a lot of older people losing their direction, they become very desperate. Um, they become very easy to compromise those very core um, principles, which we should defend in human rights, regardless where the country uh, is the problem. You know, sometimes, yes, China is not the big problem, but sometimes democracy also needs defenders. Democratic countries also need watchdogs to tell people uh, something is going wrong. And democracy in those countries can be in danger too. So I use this cartoon to express my disappointment to a lot of Chinese citizens who follow me to the threat of Trump blindly, failing to see his problem and the problem of the United States. Because I believe that a healthy democratic society is the foundation for us who are in the you know, dictatorship and authoritarian also um, have a foundation to fight back. And another one is a artwork that features the uh, prominent Chinese tennis star Peng Shuai, who went missing for months after uh, allegedly posting on Weibo, uh, accusing a former Chinese vice premier for sexually assaulting her. What does her incident have a relationship with the image and the scene from The Tank Man? I mean, time to time from China, there's unthinkable incidents that happens, but also there's great individuals, you know, uh, powerful enough to stood up, even given the most desperate situation. And Peng Shuai is definitely one of them. Uh, make no mistake, Peng Shuai was working and playing as a, a famous Chinese uh, well, sportsman, uh, a sportswoman for so many years. Um, and, and it's particularly hard for her to work in the system for so long, but also collecting the courage to speak up against one of the most powerful figures within the CCP, China's Communist Party. That courage is something truly inspiring. So that is why I was depicting her as a tank woman, but in the tennis court. I think she deserves uh, a lot of respect. And now she's still missing, and we don't know um, if she will ever be, get out uh, of this cage and free uh, playing tennis or live like a person um, uh, which she's supposed to have just as a normal life. But also, I think the topic is beyond just this one little incident. Um, a lot of people, particularly within the dissident community, would argue, you know, uh, we're fighting for human rights. So um, instead of paying attention to like Me Too movements, to feminist movements, to LGBTQ movements, um, it's not important. The pro-democracy is more important. The political um, movement is more important. All the proof the CCP is important. I want to use this cartoon or this artwork to tell those people they're wrong because you cannot really tell which right is more important than the other right. Humans like incident like Me Too is human rights, and it is something that we all should defend into. And the last thing that I want to highlight here is this issue, the Me Too issue, is not like it only happened in authoritarian regime, and sometimes it even happens in the dissident community. Um, the truth is we have a process um, I've done actually a lot of cases, um, sometimes from China, sometimes from outside of China, that even female activists are being harassed by male activists under the name of great good. And a lot of cases of areas, a lot of women try to speak up, but there is a lot of pressure because, again, once you speak up, you might be framed as the traitor of the pro democracy movement. I truly hope this, this, this situation can be changed. And I want to applaud for the great women activists who speak up 
um, for their faculties and their different tools. They are the true users. They are the heroes and the heroes. And the last one here is featuring uh, what looks like uh, a tank, but in a form of uh, something that is being like, we, we all know uh, this symbolizes how during the zero COVID uh, strategy throughout the last three years, China has really been imposing this very draconian uh, policy that has struck a lot of the normal Chinese citizens' lives. Uh, we've seen many, many examples. So can you talk a little bit about how you wanted to use this particular uh, artwork to uh, push back against this law that is currently still in place? Well, first I want to say it's always important to revisiting the Tangmen image, even though we've seen it a thousand times, but in China, it's constantly being forbidden and not allowed. So for me, even though it's kind of repetitive, um, but it's constantly meaningful to revisiting this very image, but also injecting the not relevant um, incident that's building a bridge between historic events and the most updated problems, like this one, the zero COVID policy. Well, if we trace back a little bit back, it is China, the Chinese government's counterpart from the very beginning, the locking up Dr. Like Li Wang Yang, um, that eventually bringing a outbreak into a global pandemic that caused millions of lives um, and, and almost shutting down the economy globally. Um, but now China is still uh, under this very inhumane policy, which is called zero COVID policy. This cartoon is actually echoing with a very new incident that recently happened in Shanghai's lockdown. Um, so in, in China, you know, you have to collaborate with the system to do COVID tests uh, in a daily phase. Uh, however, it creates a lot of problems and some people choose to rebel, choose to reject a test like that. So there's a policy being introduced saying, if you are not willing to collaborate with the authority, then the punishment will not just be laid on you, but also to your children, even to your parents. So it's generations of punishment. Then, this very young guy from Shanghai, my hometown, one day he got knocked up by the police, and the police struck him and mean that he did not collaborate. There have been a generation of punishment upon him. And he said something quite simple, but rather brutal and powerful. He said, no, 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 you won't, you won't have a chance, because I will be the last generation. This is a very strong statement that I ever hear from China, from my generation, this young guy. The last generation, yes, but who does that referring to? They're referring to Chinese people, mother generation should be the last generation suffering from this regime, but also saying to the powerful that you are going to be the last generation that ruling this country with this system, and we will put an end to it. And as an artist and activist that takes on big countries like China and powerful leaders like Trump and Putin, what message do you want to send to the world at a time when democracy and fundamental rights are facing renewed threats around the world? I think it's very important that the dissidents have this understanding that we're not just serving one purpose. We are independent, and we need to apply principle universally because we are defending universal rights. Um, it's, it's important that we do not just uh, kind of cage ourselves in certain topics and neglecting other topics in order to somehow benefit the cause that we care the most. Because if there's one person who are living in injustice, there will be no justice anywhere. And it's very important that we open our eyes, embrace the diversity of the world, and also see the problems around the world. Do not just criticize it on one side, criticize it on all sides. Be the dissidents of the dissidents. Speak up on all the issues. For me, that's my personal principle. For me, that's very important. Thank you so much, Badio Tao. We look forward to more works from you in the coming years. And thank you so much for coming here today.